start off, what we're going to do is take our Mayfly wing cutter, and this is the uh, third largest size. And we're also going to take our Mayfly body cutter, and I usually go a size down uh, from on that one. And I'm going to cut the body and the wing. Now the trick with the wing is I'm going to use this the river foam, which is great stuff for wing material. And what I normally do is I'll fold it in half, or at least crease it, like so. So it's just creased right there. Then I take the wing cutter, and I just size that and cut it. So you basically have a horizontal cut. So what I'm left here is with here is the wing and two or one piece, both wings, and essentially I will use that like so on the fly. The nice thing about doing it this way is you only have to worry about one piece and you can actually vary the length of this middle piece by simply the, the amount that you fold this over. So you, if you want a longer wing, you simply fold it and cut it a little bit further in on the crease. Uh, that gives you a lot more flexibility with the size and orientation of the, of the wings. And then with the body, uh, on a lot of these mayfly bodies, I like to cut them uh, in white. And the main reason is there's not a good color that I like for a lot of these mayfly bodies. So I like white and I'll color them. So I'm going to go ahead and cut two pieces. And it's a good idea to have some tweezers on hand so you can pull those out. And there we have our two pieces for the body and the wings and we're good to go. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is grab my uh, extended body tool and you can use a pin or whatever you want. And I've got my two pieces of Mayfly body and what I want to do is dab the very end of those with some super glue. But first I'm going to attach my thread to the back end of this and you'll see why I do this in a second. And then work over to the, t the front and then just build up a tiny bit of wrap there. Okay, so we've got a tight connection. Now I've got my piece here and the other piece I'm, I've am i got some super glue on the very tip of that and that will just help to make sure that that is not going to split on me. So I take that after I've glued the tips and I'm just kind of squish that together and I'll build the... it needs to be tapered. So now I'm going to slide this between the thread and bring it up just so that metal tip piece is right into where I glued the two tips. And now I bring my thread right up along the end of this and give it a wrap. Now if you want you can throw in a tail at this point but I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, once I've finished the first wrap, I put my far piece out of the way, come down in the middle of that, and then do my second segment. And then I'm going to repeat that all the way down the body. Okay, once I've got my five segments in place, I'm simply going to whip finish this last portion. Now what I'm going to do is just grab the body and pull it up and off. And then this part over here will come undone. Alright, now we've got our body done. One of the reasons why I mentioned you want to keep this 
tag end out here is what you can do. It'll help you curl your body up. So if you pull on it, since that thread is tightened down at the end of the tail, it will cause that to curve upward. Anyway, so once we've got that shape okay, I'm going to go ahead and start the thread on the hook. Okay, with my thread on there, I'm going to set my extended body down right at that last tie, uh, last segment point. Now, in this you kind of have to eyeball this. Depend on depends on the size of the hook and the size of the bug that you're trying to imitate. And this one, I'm going to go ahead and tie in right there on that last segment. And then I usually like to tie forward over the foam. and then clean up the foam. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and tie my wings in. And like I said before, one of the nice things about tying these in one piece is that you can get the you can adjust the length of the wings and the orientation of them. And so I make these things even. I want them to be canted back and even with the end of the tail, just like that, or the extended body. And so in order to do that, I'm simply going to uh, put some figure eights onto the wings, the segments, and that will secure them. Again, you want that. Those wings actually are set back at an angle. They're not straight up and down. So I like to make sure that those are oriented right. Like so. Now I like to put some legs on, and so I'm going to use some yellow dyed mallard flank. I'm just going to take a section like that off and grab and put a little bit on each side. This is right behind the wings. Okay, and I got those, you know, those kind of double as legs or the secondary wing buds. Um, and I'm going to do the same up front here in a second. First I'm going to grab some dubbing. This is just some PMD dubbing. And I'm going to use this to very lightly create my thorax. And so I just want to be careful not to bind down much of the stuff I've tied in there. And then add a figure eight. And then again a pass in front of the wings to get that canted back like we want. And then I'm going to do the same thing to create some legs in front. You could do hackle here. I'm just going to use this mallard flank because it's uh, easy to use and, and it's available. Again, just on each side, tie in a set of legs. Basically, I've got the orientation like so, where I've got a couple of sets now coming off. Pull these down tight and then take a wrap in front. Okay, and then what I want to do is build up a head. Now as a last step on this one, I have some Sally Hansons. And what I've done is I've put some yellow marker in here. And this is going to allow me to create a nice base color. I'm going to pull this stuff out of the way for a minute. And 
very lightly coat the body. I'm just going to be careful not to get much of your of your wing and your leg fibers. In order to do that, I'll come in here with my bodkin. The other thing that this tends to do is it gives a nice texture to the body. Right now, while that's still wet, I'm going to come back here with my Sharpie, and it's this yellow one, and just hit it with a couple of really quick shots of the yellow mar Sharpie. And that will actually tend to run because we've got this wet with the uh, Sally Hansons. But again, it creates a nice effect because it's got that texture on there. Then I'm going to come in with a more tan Sharpie and just get highlight a couple spots on here just for some contrast. Probably don't need to do that. And then make sure everything looks good here. And that's our finished bug.